Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Energy News Beat Daily Stand Up. My name is Stu Turley, President and CEO of Sandstone Group. Today is June 11th, and I'll tell you what, it is already wild around here. Let's take a look at our stories for today. Five things to know about the EU election results. I'll go through some of those. Europe's shift from Russian gas to pricey LNG. Europe in talks with keeping Russia Ukraine gas pipeline flowing. California's impossible war on oil and gas. California to set crank and gas power emissions to keep cool. North America continues a streak of rig add-ons. I'll tell you what, you can't buy this kind of entertainment around the world here. Uh, this morning, I have to uh, give a shout out to the Energy Realities podcast. I was on there with Tammy Nemeth, David Blackman, and um, Irina Slav, and they did an outstanding job covering the five things that you need to know about the EU election. And what we had discussed this morning was a clear shift to the right. Now, they keep saying far right, but let's go through some of these numbers in here. Far right did make some significant groups. The two groups in the European parliamentary on the furthest right of the spectrum, the European conservatives and the reformists, the ECR and the identity Democrat, group will control 131 seats in the chamber that's not counting for the alternative germany's 15 lawmakers and the 10 representatives of the hungarian prime minister victor orban's videz party belonging to poland's confederation party what this is indicating is that the renew the green side fails to follow along and what this means is that there is a waking up of people are tired of paying high prices for energy. That's what this is all about. Is this is going to happen to flow over to the United States? I believe it is. And I, I really think that we have got to stop saying it's left, right. If it's far right, what what is what they're calling far right is actually a conservative and basically a normal kind of policy of not going fully green. So wake up. You're going to see a a major reprisal for people, for politicians not taking their citizens uh, first. So you should take a look and listen to citizens. Citizens are going to vote you out. So let's go to this next big uh, article here. This one is from Oil Price. A Europe shift from Russian gas to pricey LNG. It is LNG is pricey, but it is a lot cleaner. It's best if you get natural gas from a pipeline. If you can't get it from a ship. But you got to get it. And uh, Europe switch, there's three key bullet points. Europe switch from Russian pep, uh, pipeline gas to LNG has increased energy cost despite claims of overcoming dependence without adverse effects. It's a lot more costly. Upcoming winters could see higher gas prices due to increased demand at the end of favorable weather patterns. Knee, new EU methane emission regulations will further rise raise LNG costs, making it more affordable. Here's some of the key things uh, that are, are very important. Uh, the EU bombarded Russia with sanctions following the Ukraine back in 2022. Russia's uh, exports have increased and their pocketbooks have increased. I believe 70% their energy revenues are up over the last three months. They are actually doing quite well, even around sanctions. So geopolitical problems only get passed on to the consumers and there is more to this. Gas flow for May showed earlier that gas proms flows via Ukraine to Europe went up by 39% year over year. That is huge. Russia exported 13 billion CUM natural gas to Europe. Unbelievable amount of natural gas. So when we take a look at 
where how is Europe going to pan this out? Well, take a look at uh, Europe is now in talks to keep the Russian Ukraine gas li- pipeline going. In Russia goes through this despite the war. There are several key ways that the EU still is getting gas from Europe. And let's take a look at those numbers here. Let's see. Slovakia is one of the key countries that could benefit from the deal. However, Russia still ships about 15 billion cubic meters of gas to Europe each year through Slovakia and through and Austria where Austria is still more than 80% of Australian consumption for five straight months. Russian LNG, they still import Russian LNG via ship, even though they have denied that they're doing it. Some member states are a fear of the energy crisis, and they're trying to find a solution that the Ukrainian gas transportation system will continue to be operational because it's a big asset. Someone should be a customer. Here's where the underlying war going on in Ukraine is really uh, coming to light. It's about the energy. It's about the minerals that are in Ukraine. And Ukraine is a crime scene. Quite honestly, there is so much corruption that is going on around there between the funding from different political sources that it is a shame that the Ukrainian people, the Russian people, and the United States people are all the victims. So let's get low-cost energy. I'm all about reducing energy poverty. And let's get the politicians out of the way. Did I just say that? So, okay, let's go to California. California's impossible war on oil and gas. They cannot get enough brutalizing what's keeping their lights on. The assault on oil and gas has been relentless. In September of 2023, California Attorney General Rob Bona sued ExxonMobil, Shell, Chevron, ConocoPhillips, and BP for causing climate change. Well, has anybody bothered to tell California that the only reason that they reduced any chance of their CO2 output was because of their natural gas generation? They are, they've got about 42% of their power is between nuclear and natural gas, but yet they're trying to shut down all of their natural gas that they possibly can and import more oil from Iran, China, and Russia. And it is just despicable. And they're doing more harm to the environment and to the uh, and then they possibly can. So when you take a look at energy trends based on the statistical review of world energy published annually in the 2023 edition, current data equates to 20, 288 gigajoules per capita in the United States and a mere 67 gigajoules per capita in the rest of the world by 2050. That's even got number is going to be off a ton when you consider AI and data centers. So California's climate war warriors may succeed in a quest to eliminate fossil fuels in their state, but it will become a grievous uh, cost to their fellow residents as an example for the rest of the world it cannot possibly emulate. So, you know what, California I feel sorry for anyone. I love California. I love the times that I visit there. Will not live there. But I'll tell you what, I just feel sorry for the folks that are stranded and can't get out of that state. And when you take a look, the other article on here, California to set uh, set to crank gas power and emissions to keep cool. So they have got some serious um, power problems. Listen to this. Between 2021 and 2023, Casio operators boosted gas-powered gas uh, powered plants by an average of 72% during the June to August window from the average levels of the previous three months. They have got to have the natural gas to keep the load balanced there. You can have an oversupply of solar, but at the transition time between solar and night, 
you've got to have the emergency or the stable grid stabilization of natural gas plants. The steep climb in solar has just really caused a problem with the balancing authorities and the keeping it up. So an excellent article, and this is from Reuters. Let's take a look at the last article today. North America continues the, the streak of rig add-ons. I'll tell you, let's go through some of these numbers. Of the rig count of 594, 572 rigs are classified as land. 22 are classified as offshore. The country has 492 rigs, 98 gas rigs, and four miscellaneous rigs, uh, the count highlighted. Of the total rigs, 531 as are categorized as horizontal, 43 are categorized as directional, and 20 are categorized as vertical. So week on week, the rig has dropped six land and its oil and gas rig count reduced by four, while its gas rig count was cut by two. The, the country cut five horizontal rig and one directional rig week on week. Canada's rig count of 143 is made up of 89 oil rigs, 59, 54 gas rigs, and Baker Hughes pointed out the country's gas rig stayed flat week on week. Uh, North America is down 94 compared to year on year levels. So we're going to continue to see a solid output from the U.S., because we can and because the markets are going to need it. So I'll tell you, the largest single week increase was in Oklahoma with act activity in the Ardmore Woodford formation rising uh, three to seven rigs in the Permian Basin. In the Delaware Basin fell by one to 170 and the Midland Basin activity fell uh, two rigs to 113. Anyway, with that, like, subscribe. If you're in looking for crude oil uh, or trading or LNG, you will be able to see a place we have access for traders to be able to start sourcing LNG, air, jet fuel, or crude oil. So with that, like, subscribe, share, and uh, tell your friends, hug your pets, hug your family, and we will see you on the next show. Thanks. Thank you.